today we are going to discuss about low light enhancement using deep learning so you see the, there are many more uh, mobile phones nowadays from google apple samsung vivo like etc which can take pictures like these and can convert them into pictures like these so if you see that it's just awesome right uh, but do you know how it works so we are going to discuss that in this video so we will first create a basic uh, low light enhancement model using the CNNs and a few uh, architectures like an encoder decoder and unit architecture and then we will train and test it with the lol dataset so it is a dataset which is used for low light enhancement let's get started with the basic CNN implementation Okay guys, so now let's create the basic low light enhancement model that we just discussed. So, okay, so the basically the first first step is going to be the package importation. So we need to import the packages that we uh, need. So one, so we need to import the NumPy, the pandas. If you are uh, getting the data set using a CSV or any type of data frame you can use pandas and then voyage to just know what are the image names inside a particular folder and this is the cv2 which we use to manipulate the images and then the plt we use to show the images and do the graphs and all and we use the uh, keras backend to just uh, clear the cache so that the gpu is not overloaded and these two are just the um, the things that we need right now which are the layers that, to create the model and the model frame uh, in inside which we need to create the sequential layers now this is an optional thing to do to set the np random c to 1 so that the always the np random will be uh, same when you use the seed as one well. okay guys, so the next one is to attach the drive so to mount the drive you can run this uh, this code and it will mount the drive so after running you will see a pop up where you need to allow the uh, google drive to be mounted and that will automatically mount the drive so to know if you have, you have mounted successfully or not you can open this and see that the drive uh, is mounted here so this folder uh, will be available after you have successfully mounted then this is the input path that I am having so to the LOL dataset so what I have done is I have imported I have like uploaded this LOL dataset into my drive so if I open the drive in my drive you can see the LOL dataset here which is containing our eval 15 and our 485 our 485 is the training dataset that we have high and low nothing but high is the high lightened image low is the low lightened image so the respectively the names will also like the file names will also be uh, exactly matching with in both these folders so that is done uh, so you will be up you should be uploading this data set i'll be linking uh, like linking this data set in the description so that you can download and then the noise edition we have here so what we are doing here is we are adding artificial noise here and this noise is basically called salt and pepper noise salt and pepper noise is nothing but we are adding uh, we are changing the pixel values right we are changing directly the random pixel values uh, so if you see here we are using the np random which is having the seed here so when you have seed one you always get the same number in the random randint from this if you use the same input Okay, so by this, uh, so for this reason, um, we are adding noise uh, artificially because we don't have any noise in our images. That's done. Now we need to use this noise to generate the output images of our particular input images, right? Uh, we'll see how those two look. If I run this, uh, I'm uh, taking the hundredth image, and you can see here that this is the original image. Okay, so this is the original image and this is the noise that we have added the salt and pepper noise and here you can see the dark and image of it so this will be the input for our 
uh, model and this has to predict this right cool so you can see that it is very dark and it has some noise that we have added artificially and this should be the output uh, from our model so now that's uh, understood uh, let's uh, look at the code here so i am take i'm directly taking the i mean reading the image and then converting it to rgb so basically what happens is as uh, cv2 always take the image in brg format so brg scheme but we need to change that to rgb because our model will be basically trained on rgb rather than BR, BR, bgr so so that's done now uh, this is just a subplotting we are uh, plotting here and then here we are adding the noise to the image that is this and then the hsv convert color so when we convert the color to hsv format and we change uh, we are changing them like uh, modifying the hsv here so when we directly modify the hsv it darkens the image basically and it will never it will not change any other part of the image so it will not change the features of the image it will not change the noise of the image it will only change the hsv or hue of the image simply so that's it uh, after uh, after adding the dark color like dark uh, hsv we will convert it back to the bgr and that we will be showing here then so this is how our original image this one our noise image this one will look like now that's done let's do this for the whole data set so here tqdm is you uh, i mean i'm importing here so this is used for uh, loading bars so we will see this so the, here you see the loading bar right so this loading bar will be available if you use this uh, tqdm uh, extensively high path uh, here uh, is nothing but highlight and images path right so we'll be giving that as input and we will be generating the noisy images here and we will be uploading to uh, x and y and we will be giving them as an output so this is the pre-processed data function does so let's run that and let's start the pre-processing of the input path so we know that the input path is now is pointing towards all the highlight and images we will just take all of the images like there are 488 we will take all of them and convert them to x and y uh, arrays so x represents the original image sorry the low light and images and the noisy images y represents the high light and image or the original uh, image of the particular uh, data point okay so now that's done uh, let's start with the model creation so every single time we do k clear session to make sure that the previous session uh, values are not in our uh, keras backend so now instantiate model is nothing but we'll instantiate uh, the layers here so let's do that so we are just by basically uh, we'll uh, talk about this architecture uh, when we do the summary okay so we now completed with the model function let's create the model so the input that we are generally taking for this demo or creation of the model is 500 by 500 pixels uh, 3 represents the rgb so here 500 by 500 pixels uh, is large enough to have all of the features of a particular uh, data point then the output is nothing but the model with the input sample and then the enhancer is nothing but our uh, final model with these two inputs and outputs so this is done uh, let's uh, compile it so compilation uh, include giving optimizer and loss functions so loss function is basically uh, mean squared error so what is mean squared error mean squared error is a standard uh, more like standard method that we use when we have two uh, array differences and we need to find the uh, sorry arrays and we we want to find the loss between these two or cost between these two so we use that using uh, mean square error we will talk about it later later in the en enlightenment gan uh, part of the things then the optimizer is adam so it's a well known optimizer it basically uh, does a very good job of de uh, reducing this loss function then the uh, summary will uh, will not look at the summary here 
but we'll just look at the total params that we are using. So here you can see the total params are like 134k, which are like <laughs> very less when we compare to large level models, uh, which use like millions of parameters. But you need to uh, think about one thing that is if you increase these parameters uh, after a certain point, you need to have gigabytes of data sets and need to train for days to uh, get uh, good results out of that particular model. So now we are done with that. Let's see what is the structure. So here, this is the basically the structure of our model now. So we are basically using a kind of unit structure here because if you see, we start with the input image and we split it into two layers. So this layer will be having a 16 output, like 500 by 500 by 16, and this is 32. And we'll process that uh, with the double increment that we already discussed in the previous video, 16 to 32, 32 to 64. The same thing happens here, 32 to 64, 64 to 64. So here we are keeping it same so that we need to add these two uh, again and then we'll split again into three parts. So why are we doing these skip connections? So these skip connections are basically a way to store the features. So when you do a high level processing, like high processing of a particular image or feature, you don't actually uh, will be able to retain most of the information. So that is going to be a problem when we come to our final conclusion or prediction. So when we come here and we are doing the prediction, most of the times we don't have the information about the first layer, which is a problem because our final output should always be in context with the input image. That is what we discussed, right? So for that, we will be using these kind of skip connections, which will make sure that the input image features are still available at the output predictions. So you can see that these skip connections are uh, following the same idea. So after this uh, uh, whole skip, skip connections and all, you will be getting an uh, image output, which is having the same shape as the input image, which is 500 by 500 by 3. So that's it for the model's architecture. Uh, this kind of uh, relates to the unit model. And I haven't discussed that in detail. If you guys want to uh, know about it, please uh, give it in the comment section. Now that's done. Let's uh, start our training mode. So I, I'll start the training and then we will explain. Huh. So here, if you see, we are generate, generate inputs is nothing but we'll be taking X and Y values, which we have uh, taken by, by pre-processing our data. And then the input would be the reshape of it. So why we are reshaping? Because our model that we have created will be taking an array of one image. So it will not directly take 500 by 500 by 3. It takes 1 comma 500 by 500 by 3, which shows that it takes an array containing only one image. Then the same goes with the Y input. And then these two will be yield. And only after yielding these two, we will be going for the next uh, input. Okay, so now let's discuss about the fit generator. So fit generator requires another uh, function like the generator inputs, which will uh, train the model respectively for each and every input output pair. And then we have epochs, which will show us, uh, let's say if you have completed going through your whole training data set for once, and that is one epoch. So you have to do that 53 times. Now uh, we have given 53, so it, it does 53 times. And then verbose is nothing but the amount of inf information that you want to see during the training. So if you give one, you will, it will show you every single epoch. If you uh, reduce it, it will be basically zero to one. And if you change it uh, like 0.4 or 0.5, it will only show you few of the epochs and it will only show you few of the details. And then steps per epoch. So steps per epoch is nothing but how many steps are being taken for uh, one of these 53 epochs. And shuffle equals to true is nothing but every single epoch will not get the same uh, like images in the same order. They will the, they will be shuffled when you give shuffle equals to true. Okay, here you need to remember one more thing that is 
epochs should always epochs times the steps per epoch should always be less than or equals to the data set images so if you are having data images or uh, training data images to be more specific now the training data set images are uh, let's say 220 then this uh, epochs time the steps per epoch should be less than or equals to 220 so that every single image will be used or else what happens your images will be uh, running out quickly as you are having less images rather than this uh, particular steps okay so now that is done you can see the losses uh, how they are decreasing and increasing based on the images that we are giving and finally here is the loss 33 344 now let's uh, just test the test it so this is the nothing but the same uh, applying the noise uh, like adding the hsv and then uh, resizing it to 500 by 500 to 1500 by 500 by 3 so that is done so this is the extract uh, test input now let's go with the inference so in the inference we are uh, taking these three subplots uh, one is the ground truth subplot and the other one is low light image and then the enhanced image so we'll take one of the things and let's see how it looks and okay so you can see that it is uh, not correctly predicting the colors but it has predicted everything else so what is what do you think the wrong uh, what is what do you think is the wrong here so it it predicted every single thing i think he re it removed the hue but the issue is with the colors so to to what do you call it uh, fix it you just need to actually train it one more time so that it gets the gist of colors okay okay guys so if you see here the output i have i uh, made the training go one more time and the output like the loss is around 140 now and you can see that the image generated is uh, a bit better than the previous one and the colors are also matching but still you can see that this color is orange uh, matching the teddy bear's uh, color but here if you see it is red and even the yellow is been changed to orange so you can see that this is a generated image and uh, you can also see that in the pink was replaced by orange so let me change it to some other image let us see uh, how that image looks like So, uh, so this is the ground truth image, and this is the enhanced image. So you can see that some of the salt and pepper noise is not yet removed, but from the low light image that we already had, this enhanced image looks so much better, right? So this is basically how you can train a basic uh, low light enhancement model. I will give this code in the description so that you can uh, mess around with this and create one of your own. So. So with that, I will conclude this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, you can just post in the comment section. And also, if you have, uh, if you want to know about the GAN and stable diffusion, there is I made a video on that. And also, how the Chat GPT is biased uh, currently, you can also check it out in my another video, which was already published. And stay tuned for the updates, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye